The amount of dividend income that an investor can expect from a relatively small portfolio, say for example a $10,000 portfolio, is thought to be not all that much dividend income considering something like the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF VU only offers a 1.3% dividend yield. And although most stocks and ETFs across the market don't really offer a high enough dividend yield to allow an investor with just $10,000 invested to make a substantial amount of cash flow, there are different methods and different wealth generating vehicles across the market that do offer extremely high yields, which could turn a $10,000 portfolio into a cash flowing machine. Now, in today's video, we're going to go over some of these different techniques that an investor could potentially invest into to earn a substantial amount of cash flow from day one with just $10,000 invested. Now, if you consider yourself a dividend income focused investor and this interests you at all, make sure to please drop a like down below, stick around and let's get right into it. I just finished my brand new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from zero to now over seven figures invested and also on how I earn more than $6,000 per month in dividends. I also finished my custom dividend tracker that you can use to track your dividend income progress on an ongoing basis. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today it's the first link in my description now first things first i want to make it very clear i'm not saying that any of these different etfs that we're going to go through in today's video are necessarily good investment options but i do think it's fun to play around with the idea of turning a ten thousand dollar portfolio into a cash generating machine but without wasting any more time going into the first extremely high yielding etf and side note this is actually an etf that i hold in my portfolios i'm talking about the simplify volatility premium etf or svol so with this sort of interesting alternative strategy, SVOL shorts the VIX and earns a ton of premium for doing so, but all along they still offer a modest overlay and some VIX call options just in case things go sideways. Now some more important information about VIX, the gross expense ratio. This is probably one of the worst things about this ETF, even though, even though nowadays with some of these ultra high yielding ETFs, investors are sort of numb to say 1% gross expense ratios, etc. But SVOL does have a 1.16% gross expense ratio. And again, this is partially because this asset is so actively managed. Now total assets under management is 609 million, which, which is up quite a bit year over year. Now the distribution yield for SVOL, and we're gonna go over the dividend a little bit deeper in a second here. But as of right now, we're talking a 15.88% distribution, which is much higher than pretty much all dividend stocks and ETFs across the markets. Again, until we get into these ultra high yielding options. Also important for those income seekers out there like myself and like probably a lot of you guys, SVOL does pay a dividend on a monthly frequency, which is pretty nice, especially if you are interested in reinvesting consistently a little bit faster. Now, SVOL as of right now, as a film in this video is currently offering around a 16.27% trailing 12 month dividend yield. And like we sort of talked about earlier in the video, a lot of different ETFs and stocks across the market seem to offer anywhere from around one to 3%. Although, of course, there are certain stocks and ETFs that offer much, much higher. So with SVOL offering a 16.27% dividend yield, and the fact that SVOL does pay a monthly dividend of around 30 cents or so, and side note, I'm not going to dig super deep into each one of these ETFs. We can, of course, save that for a different video, and I have tons of videos going over all these different ETFs on my channel, so make sure to check them out. But without wasting any more time and getting right into the math, which is what I know you guys want to see, a $10,000 investment into SVOL, which currently costs around $22.70, means that an investor could afford around 440 shares of SVOL if they did have a $10,000 portfolio. Now with those 440 shares, SVOL is currently paying around 30 cents per share per month. So with just a $10,000 investment, an investor could earn around 132 or $133 in cash flow on a monthly basis by, by investing into this high yielding ETF. Now the next higher than average yielding ETF that an investor could buy into if they were looking to turn their $10,000 portfolio into a cash flow machine would be JEPQ or the JP Morgan nasdaq equity premium income etf now this is also one of my personal holdings i own a good amount of jepq across my portfolios now jepq's dividend yield isn't as crazy as svol's but jepq offering a 9.24 percent trillion 12 month dividend yield is still not bad whatsoever but to get right into the numbers with a ten thousand dollar budget knowing that jepq is around 53 dollars and 10 cents an investor could purchase around 188 shares of jepq with a portfolio that has ten thousand dollars of cash balance in it now, JEPQ's dividend is going to change on a monthly basis, just like a lot of these other ETFs, but the last dividend announced specifically was $0.34. Cents. So just going off of that, a $0.34 cent dividend from 188 shares would pay around $64 per month in dividends. And again, that might not seem like all that much, but that's much, much more in dividends than most other common stocks or ETFs are going to pay across the market. 
Next, I thought it'd be fun to go into some of the crazier, more riskier options. And again, like I said earlier, I'm not saying that these are good options, but it is fun to just look into. The next one we're talking about is Kony or the Yieldmax Coin Option Income Strategy ETF. Now, this Yieldmax ETF pays a massive, massive dividend of around 35.99% as far as the trillion 12 month. Or to be more specific, Kony has paid anywhere from $1.08 on a monthly basis all the way up to $2.69 on a monthly basis in dividends. And again, because this is an option income ETF, the dividends on a monthly basis are most likely not going to be the same, which again could be a problem for some investors. Now with a $10,000 budget, knowing that Kony is currently around $23.85, the investor could purchase 419 shares of Kony which is quite substantial knowing that Kony as of the last month paid $1.09, which means a $10,000 investment into Kony could potentially earn an investor $457 in dividends on a monthly basis. But again, remember the dividends are going to change over time. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Another one of the higher yielding ETFs across the market that I'm also a fan of and that I do currently own quite a bit of throughout my portfolios is, is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF known as JEPI which is currently trading just under $57 and is offering just shy of an 8% trillion 12 month dividend yield. Now with $10,000 currently, an investor could purchase right around 175 shares of JetP, which might not seem like all that much, but considering JetP pays anywhere from 30 cents on a monthly basis, up to 40, 50, 60 cents, depending on what happens within the time frame. Because again, JetP does use options just like all the other ETFs. If we were to just take a 35 cent dividend, an investor that bought $10,000 worth of JetP could earn around $61 per month in dividends, which again is substantial with just a $10,000 investment. We didn't even talk about this in today's video, but I do talk about stuff like this across my channel quite often. So make sure to take a look like I said. But if we were to invest just $10,000 starting principal into a monthly pain ETF that offers a 16% yield, let's just say, a 1% annual dividend amount increase, a 1% expected annual share price appreciation, and then had drip turned on or dividend reinvestment turned on and reinvest the dividends over time, you can see just how much a $10,000 portfolio could turn into and how much dividend income this portfolio could pay over time. Now building a portfolio of various stocks and ETFs and then reinvest in the dividends and buy more shares of different stocks or ETFs is exactly what I do personally as of right now. And this right here is my seven figure portfolio that currently earns me north of $6,100 per month in dividends every single month. And as you can see throughout my portfolio, I do have a small portion of some of the names that we went through in today's video. Although I also want to have some lower yielding names in the portfolio that do of course have some more growth potential because a lot of times when stocks and ETFs are offering a super high yield, they don't always offer growth potential on top of that. But lastly, I want to hear from you guys down below out of all the different high yielding stocks and ETFs across the market as of right now, what is your number one favorite that you can't stop buying enough of? Drop the ticker symbol in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.